Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlamagne the God, Angela Yee, DJ Envy is not here today, and we have a special guest. She goes by the name of Ingrid, Ingrid Newkirk. Newkirk. She is the CEO of PETA. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm a little squeaky, but I'm fine. Thank and, you. And you got a book out called <laughs> Animal Kind. I do. It's remarkable things you can learn about animals and the wonderful ways that we can help them if we care about them. Now, we've been trying to get a representative from PETA up here for quite some time, so it's nice to have you up here as the CEO. I remember they reached out to us during, um, there was a Canada Goose protest that was happening, and some of the New York City-based uh, people from PETA actually reached out to us about that whole thing. And then there was a fur ban that was happening in New York City that was proposed last year. So I want to get some of your insight into those things, like what's going on with Canada Goose? And then after that, I want to discuss this whole fur ban. Well, I don't know if you've seen on YouTube, there's a cute little video, it's on the uh, front of CNN too, of this baby coyote who's so excited because he meets his friend a badger. This is a real thing. And they go through a tunnel together. And you think he's playing just like a dog. And I think of them being caught in steel traps because that's how they end up as the fur trim on a Canada goose jacket. And you don't need it. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody needs it. We've got all these faux things if you right. want something that looks like that. Um, and if you don't, there are all sorts of wonderful synthetic fibers and natural fibers. So if you don't like cruelty to animals, then we say, please stay away from Canada goose um, because it's not just that. It's the idea that it's acceptable to walk around in something from cavemen times. We're not in cavemen times. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't need to bludgeon animals and catch them that way. So Canada goose, the campaign is ongoing. Their stock is falling. Apparently people, uh, it's fallen out of favor. It started with 007 in one of those James Bond films, the mm -hmm. name of which I can't remember, mm -hmm. um, wore it. And so then of course everybody wants it. It's like mm -hmm. Kim Kardashian wears something, everybody wants it. Luckily she doesn't wear fur anymore. Right. So that's gone, gone, gone. Um, but yeah, the Canada goose thing is very strong. I'm confused about a lot of <laughs> things because I didn't know, first of all I thought Canada goose was goose feathers. It is. Oh. Inside, yeah, but the you're fur right. trim. Oh, the fur like trim. Around the okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. You're gotcha. right. And we've been on actually the farms where the geese are used, you know, for food. And so they're factory farmed, which is just a filth pit. And then they go on these uh, long journeys to the slaughterhouse. Geese mate for life. They could teach human beings a thing or two. I think we have a 45% divorce rate. And they are just wonderful mates. They're very good parents. Um, and you see them on these farms just being slammed into the crates and mm -hmm. they're slammed so tightly that some of them suffocate. It's just not civilized. It's, it's just not something we need to do. We've got fiber fill. We've got these fantastic things now that keep you warmer. They're lighter weight. They're really cool. And you don't need the goose feathers anymore. Could we do any of that <laughs> stuff if we didn't harm the animals? Like if you gently pluck the feathers off because the feathers would grow back. Like if you didn't kill the animals or hurt them in order to get their fur, could we, would you? Would it's Peter a, be more accepting of that? It's a great question. I mean, mm -hmm. for us, you could eat roadkill. It doesn't bother the animal at all. There are things you can do. If the animal was dead, yes, mm -hmm. you could pluck the animal. Gotcha. Um, but actually, your question is important because in China, for example, uh, live plucking is the thing they, they, they do. And they hold the geese down and the geese scream. There are videos on our website. They're not pleasant. They're mm -hmm. not something you show children. And they just rip the feathers out of them. And it's like taking your hair and just ripping your hair out. It gets bloody. It's a mess. They tremble. They, are, they don't scream. Geese don't scream. But you can tell they're totally wrecked. They're traumatized. And they go off in the corner and they just shake. And that goes happens over and over until the day comes when they kill them. Yeah, I've never had a problem with PETA. I think what y'all stand for is good, but I think that sometimes PETA can be just as violent as the people that they're, you know, uh, mad at. Like when you throw stuff at people, when you throw paint on we people. We never have. It, you know, that is an urban myth. It's the most amazing thing. We have always, we jump on runways, or we used to. You don't need to anymore. Mm -hmm. We jump on a runway with um, red paint on our hands and people donate their coats to us. Thousands and thousands of coats over the years have come in. We will decorate them with blood and walk down the street and that gives people a jolt. And sometimes we'll put a slogan on them and sometimes we won't, but it makes people think, this didn't come from some nonviolent process. Some animal had to be strangled, bludgeoned, gassed, whatever, mm -hmm. to make this coat. But we actually have never ever, um, people think we do, people say all sorts of things, 
we haven't done that. I'm sure people have done that, and maybe members of ours have done that because we've got a lot of them. But that's not something you're saying. That's not no, 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 that you no. Yeah, we are totally nonviolent, mm-hmm. and we will put ourselves on the line. You know, we will crawl in front of a, fl- of a f- or we used to, we don't have to anymore, <laughs> crawl in front of a first door, um, put our own hands in steel traps, for example, cover ourselves with red paint. But we just pretty much make fools of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And you say you don't have to anymore. Is that because of social media? Is it because of being able to get the word out in other ways? Well, we campaigned so hard over the years. And at first, people would just say, who cares? And nobody really knew what happened to animals. No one knew about these factory farms where Mm -hmm. they keep, you know, the foxes and everything else who go mad. They just turn in circles. They go insane because of confinement. But we showed the pictures. We showed the video. That was before YouTube. Mm -hmm. It was before the Internet. Now everybody knows. You know, you have to live in a cave if you don't know (laughs) where fur came from. And so young people especially are turning their back on it. The big designers, Galliano, Gucci, Donna Karen, Versace, they all used to carry fur. And now nobody does. And there's fur bands like in California, (laughs) right? So yeah. explain that. And then I know in New York last year, I remember there were these protests because they were trying to bring the fur ban to New York. I don't know if it got passed. No, it didn't get passed. I think they'll br- probably bring it back because it's an evolutionary thing. Mm-hmm. You know, first it's a new idea, and then nobody really wants anybody to tell them what to do anyway. They want to make the decision themselves. Um, but just like the circus bans, banning uh, the use of the bull hook, that fireplace poker with the hook on the end for the elephants... And then eventually banning the circus from appearing so that they can't bring in wild animals right. and make them do something. They actually change thing. the circus a lot now because <laughs> now um, they do things like more like on bikes. It's people on bikes and more the trapeze acts. And you don't see animals in the circus like you used to. It's fabulous. All these human acts and the people get paid and they get to go home to their families mm-hmm. and they can quit if they want to. And nobody captured them somewhere and made them come and do it. Cirque du Soleil, I mean, I just shake my head when I look at that. I don't know how human beings can do mm-hmm. those things. I hate it's, the zoo too. Zoo's like animal prisons. They are. Yeah. You know who said that? Oh. I can't remember his name, but one of, was it Sicipio? One of these prisoners who was captured during the Iraq war and they kept him on a balcony in the freezing cold. And when he came out, he said, I now know I will never take my children to a zoo because that's how I felt in captivity being stared at. Wow. Is there ever a reason to hurt an animal? If they're attacking you, you yeah. might. Okay, I was hoping <laughs> you would say that. Yeah, 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 okay. okay. And a human animal too, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, whoever. But no, I think we pick on them. You know, they're minding their own business. I, I, can, I agree. And and there should be respect. They, they, just leave them alone. Leave them in peace. They're just like us. They've got emotions. They feel sad. They feel happy. They want freedom. They don't want to be hurt. They don't want to be killed. And um, just leave them in peace. Respect them. You t- now, in the book, you talk about animal compassion. You talk about the revolutionary new ways to show animal compassion. What, what does that look like? Well, for example, in school, we just sunk $150,000 into a a synthetic frog. It's got a membrane like a real frog, and the kids love it. You can cut it up, and none of the little boys can go inside it and dangle real organs in front of the little girls and make them sick. There's no formaldehyde in it. It's a great way to learn, if you want to learn dissection, without taking frogs from the ponds and the wild and then sticking them in formaldehyde, killing them, and cutting them up. That basic lesson at that level when you're a kid, I think, teaches you to really devalue life and not think about how wonderful animals are. We're all animals. Mm -hmm. We're all in this together. It's a great orchestra of life. And so this new synthrope frog is going to teach dissection without doing that. Although why people need to know what's inside a frog, I have never been able what to about, figure out. What about testing like medications? Oh, you, just said why, you said wild people. Oh, I think you said white people. people. <laughs> <laughs> white people, any people. <laughs> what about <laughs> testing animals, right? Like trying out medicines and possible treatments on animals. You know how they'd be like, oh, well, we tested this on rats, and this is what happened, and this is what we discovered, so now we can use this on humans. What well, um, what happens in those scenarios? It's interesting because that too is changing. I mean, everything is changing, mm-hmm. a lot because of technology. And we now have things like human organs on a chip, 
I mean, who would ever have even thought that? We wouldn't even know what it meant. Um, you can take whole human brain tissue now, and they're growing it in a Petri dish, lev little layers of it. Um, we've got whole human DNA on the internet. So you test something in a rat, 90 to 95% of the time, that drug that you test works in rats, but doesn't Anatomy. work in humans. Mm -hmm. And that's why you see all the other drugs to counter the effects of the drugs you just took right. and the lawsuits and the people saying, hey, have you been hurt by such and such? Call us. We will <laughs> litigate for you. Now, now, Ingrid, you got to hate this. rats. Huh? You got to hate, you gotta hate I rats. Don't. I don't. Come on. I, I really don't. Do you know Ooh. that Donald Trump's son is a slum lord in Baltimore? I thought you were to say he's a rat. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Okay. He makes rats look good. Yeah. Because rats are just eking out an existence. You know, they've got a little hole in the wall or somewhere. They don't mean to be there. They've got no option. Um, when you want to get rid of them, that's fine. But do it humanely because the options for doing that exist. Donald Trump Jr. had the gall to say that Baltimore was a rat-infested cesspool or whatever yeah. he said. And, no, you know, that wasn't Jr. That was actually Trump. Trump said that. Well, he know. said it, but his son his runs, son the okay. run, gotcha. runs tenements and what have you. Mm -hmm. He's a slumlord. And he doesn't clean anything up. If you clean things up, rats don't come. Rats come because we don't have a way to dispose of our garbage properly, or there isn't enough garbage collection, or, you know, nobody's looking after the building, so there are holes in it. It's not the rat's fault. That's what I say. You ever seen a New York City rat? <clears throat> yeah, that was, they're like, <laughs> you've got big, to get rid of them, big? You can get rid of them, but just do it kindly. How? What's kind of there is now D.C., where I am, my headquarters is in D.C., we have birth control for rats, and that will eliminate the problem forever. Because if you just poison rats, it not only hurts them, it's not civilized. Rat, more rats come in to fill that gap where those rats died because they know there's a food source there. So if you can't get rid of the food source, birth control will eventually just get rid of them. What did they, I mean, what did the birth control do? I don't know. It's a chemical sterilant. And they put it in, you know, you see those boxes, and they put it in the box. The mm -hmm. rat eats the food, and they get chemically sterilized. And if they, I think if they have young, they are sterile, but I don't think they have young. I'm not exactly sure, but it's it's in operation. They're trying it. They're happy with it so far. So we're trying to make rats extinct? In the city, it's mm. not good to have rats. I mean, rats. I are, agree with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, it's not good for kids. It's not good for the rats. It's not good for people. So yeah, we don't need it. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you this: the Super Bowl commercial. Mm. I was watching when this was happening. I actually saw it, right? And you guys had submitted a commercial that could be played during the Super Bowl. You had the budget for it because we know that's not cheap. And the animals were on there, and they took a knee. And I remember reading that. The, they never got back to you, right, about whether or not the commercial would air. At Correct. first, they were reviewing the commercial, seeing what they could do, and then all of a sudden, communication ceased. Yeah, Fox News. And we believe the NFL um, actually pressured Fox not to run it. Um, we were in touch with Colin Kaepernick before we ran the commercial. We wanted to get his nod. We did. He wrote back to us. He likes the commercial. So we didn't want to do anything disrespectful. We wanted to, um, you know, be part of let's respect everybody. Mm -hmm. And so when we got his nod, we were so excited. And we went to Fox. We said, run it. No. Nothing. I can't imagine, though, they would have uh, ran something with animals taking a knee just because they don't want anybody to take a knee. So Yeah, absolutely. And neither does the NFL. Right. So I think we were in a no-win situation. But the fact is, we got it out there. It's mm -hmm. been seen by, I don't know, four million some people and I adore it. It makes right. me cry every time I see it. So you don't like foxes? <laughs> I like foxes a lot. Not, Fox not the TV. not Fox TV, no. I mean they uh, have a lot to account for. Why, why why did Peter stop the Go Naked campaign? We just did that. It's our fortieth anniversary. Okay. And we started it thirty some years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was really successful. Lots of celebrities appeared in it. Um, they really, we don't need it anymore. You just don't need it because really? people have turned away from fur. Um, majority of people just think that it's kind of old fashioned. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just not something that's in today's world. It's just something your grandmother used to want to wear or did wear. And I remember as a kid dressing up in a fox stole that had a fox on either side 
and they had these little beady plastic eyes they put where they took the fox's real eyes out. And there was the snout, there were the paws that hung over your shoulder. Why? Uh, <laughs> stop that. And I thought <laughs> I looked really good. But oh, what did I know? That was 64 years ago. Times have got to change, please, mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. You know, no, foxes, they're, they're playful. They, they're family animals. They're mm -hmm. clever. They eke out an existence. And we do not need to kill them and wear them. What does eke out an existence mean? I heard you say that a couple of times. What does that mean? <laughs> oh, you're just struggling to survive. You know? Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You know, you just, you don't have a lot going for you. You're in a human-dominated world. And you just do the best you can to feed your family or yourself and just get by until Sounds you like die. Sounds like being black. <laughs> in some ways, it yeah. does. What, what's the, what's the, why is a pet a derogatory term now? Well, um, I'm from, you know, old school and the old movement of feminism and so on. And it took a while for us to get men to stop referring to women in certain ways. I mean, many men still do, but there's a sort of thing where you don't want to be thought of as a possession. And the word pet implies, like Playhouse, what Penthouse Pet of the Year used to be, maybe they still have it, I don't know, um, is that it's your possession. You can do with that whatever you want. But a dog, of course, isn't a thing. They're not a table or a chair. They're a living being, and they have thoughts. They watch you carefully. Average dog in a person's home understands 300 words of your language. We understand none of theirs. They have to pay attention because you're in charge. They don't get a drink of water. They don't get anything unless you say so. They don't even get to relieve themselves unless you say so. So maybe talk of yourself as carer or guardian. Your animal is part of the family as a companion. And just maybe not think of them as something you own. You know, ownership isn't cool. But that's why it, you give the dog a name though, right? But you give your child a name too. It's respectful, mm -hmm. you know. What about when people put their animals to sleep, right? Let's say that your dog or your cat is in pain and, uh, you know, something's happening and they're like, we have to put the dog to sleep. Is that an inhumane thing to do? Because no. we wouldn't do that to a human being. Well, actually, in Europe, of course, there is voluntary euthanasia you, yeah, and a bunch of things. And in fact, I think Oregon and some other states have voluntary euthanasia. If you're racked with pain, it might be the ultimate kindness mm -hmm. to just say, we're going to let you move on now. You don't have to suffer through this until nature takes you. So, no, I, most people wait too long mm -hmm. because they love yeah, that dog. Yeah, you don't want to have to do that. No, and you know you're going to hurt so much much and you're going to blame yourself because you took that decision but you shouldn't because you're doing it for them and if they are miserable if their life doesn't mean anything except pain to them then good for you if you call the vet or take them to the vet and have euthanasia because they don't know them they're gone and there's no more pain for them you'll still get the same pain mm -hmm. you just won't be delaying it you'll still hurt you'll still grieve now for you Ingrid you talked about the fox doll that you had when you were younger and we know that you weren't always uh, vegan you weren't always uh, against killing animals and wearing fur so that journey for you started when you what happened that that actually made you feel like okay I have to join PETA or I'm no longer eating animals I'm embarrassed. I was a really slow learner, and I probably pretty much did everything. Um, I didn't hunt, but I fished. I went fishing with my father. My father and I basically ate our way through the whole animal kingdom. There were only two things I wouldn't eat. One was tongue, because I'd seen a cow stick their tongue out, and that was just revolting. And the other was my father liked intestines, which has... Chitlings. Ooh. Chitlings. Yeah, like, yeah. Disgusting. And in England, they're called something else that's now escaping me. But yeah, it, and it what stunk it up the whole house. Yes, yep. that's chitlings. Yeah. Tripe. Yeah, my mother cooked tripe. them. Tripe, tripe. Mm -hmm. And we'd open all the windows afterwards, and I wouldn't eat disgusting. that. Disgusting. But we ate everybody else, and like I who? say everybody. Like who? <clears throat> well, we ate veal, for example. That Tasty. was one of... No, you know, hey, Charlotte, you know, veal, it's the baby cow, mm -hmm. and the mother loves that cow. That's why Mo it's so tender. Mother's love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they take him away when he's tiny, put him in a crate, feed him some gruel that makes his flesh tender and, and white anemic, and then they kill him 
and she misses him, and cows on a farm, a dairy farm, will cry. I've seen them cry, and I have. See, can't eat that. I've heard a lot of people say you should always eat the mother if you're going to eat the child, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, it actually would be a courtesy if you shot the mother first in the head yeah. when she wasn't looking, but no. I have seen, <laughs> I have seen cows cry, all. though. Come from South yeah. Carolina, I've definitely seen cows cry. And they actually cry. Mm -hmm. They have tears. Yeah. Elephants do, too. They actually cry real tears. So, you know, we've got taste-alikes nowadays. Mm -hmm. We have everything that tastes like something you've grown up with or you like. A lot of fake meat out there that you can eat. Yeah, even at Denny's, even mm -hmm. at Dunkin' Donuts, at the TGI Beyond Burger. Fridays, at Apple, everywhere you can get a Beyond Burger or a Impossible Beyond. Burger. Love Beyond. Mm -hmm. So you're telling me that you don't miss meat at all? Like none? Like not, It has to be sometimes you're like, I wouldn't mind a good steak. No. When I started, I did miss meat. I didn't give up eating meat because I didn't like the taste. I love the taste. Um, I gave it up because I saw what happened in the slaughterhouse, and I didn't want my money going there. Yeah. I don't want to be part of anything like that. It's so also disgusting. not good for you anyway. <laughs> it isn't. It's you know, I stopped eating red meat 27 years ago, and I don't miss it at all. But I also feel like when you see people, you know, a lot of people that are have all these diseases and cancer, a lot of that is caused by meat. You eat chicken, though, right? Not anymore. Yay! So, what do you eat? Uh, vegetables. I never ate fish my whole life. So you're vegan? Yes, I'm not great. a vegan. Oh. You're a pre-vegan. Yeah, but I always work on myself. Like, I had stopped eating chicken so much because I felt like because I don't eat pork, I don't eat red meat, I don't eat seafood, and I haven't had pork since I was, like, in middle school. And so I still was only eating chicken, and then I started eating it only twice a week, and then now I just stopped eating it. So you I were started the eating. Best. I, I Teach thought, this man. Well, was, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. It's Chick Fil A's fault. Chick Fil A said eat more chicken, so I stopped eating beef. <laughs> uh -huh. But it's a process, uh -huh. and I think you Don't feel do it. you Don't feel healthier. It. People will be like, "Oh, your skin looks amazing." Like even for yourself, it's not like it's good for you to be eating meat. It's not the benefits that they say you can get from eating meat. You can get from other things too. Yeah, and you don't get diabetes, you don't get heart disease, mm -hmm. you don't get high blood pressure, you don't get these things which are plaguing and killing most Americans. Mm -hmm. And you look at people my age, I'm 70 and a bit, I always say I'm 70 and a quarter, mm -hmm. and I go out with somebody my age, they've got a box of pills, right. you know, and they take pills all the time. I have a cold now, you know, you can't stop that, but I don't have, touch, I not wood, but I don't have any of these things. And it's not just that if you read the medical literature, it tells you straight up there is absolutely the connection between eating chicken, even fish, fish is full of fat, and red meat, sure, um, and all those diseases that are killing people. So mm -hmm. get away from it. People, you see them walking down the street, and older people can barely move. It's like we've got a nation of crippled people out there after the age of 50 or 60. Why? Your veins should, your arteries should be clear. And on a vegan diet, you're going to be so healthy. That's what nature intended. Mm -hmm. you know? What is speciesism? Because I, I read something about that, and that was like... <laughs> It was it was a language, right? Like, don't say things like "dog on" or <laughs> no, was almost. It? But it's just against supremacism, and speciesism says don't think you're a god just because you belong to one species. Just because you're in control doesn't mean that you shouldn't be decent to the other species. So it's against human supremacism, discrimination, um, prejudice against others because they're not exactly like you. What about roaches? <laughs> Can I kill a roach I in my house? I knew you'd get there. I just have to ask. Is that okay? Well, you can kill a roach in your house, but we also have chemical sterilants for roaches. So there are now a lot of things, and I lose a lot of people here, I know, because no one wants. I don't want roaches in my house. Mm -hmm. No one wants roaches in my house. If I see a roach, I'm, I might have to stomp on it. I'm sorry. I'm not going to make me believe best, that roaches <laughs> serve a purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. I mean, every, every living being, I think, probably serves a purpose. We just don't know it. But if you want roaches out of your house, then there are, again, there are chemosterilants, mm -hmm. and there are things. Because if you kill one, you know there are 4,000 behind that one. They're, co they're still coming. Mm -hmm. So you just need to make sure to use a deterrent. And we have a list on our website for ants, for grasshoppers, for roaches. And maybe they work, and, you know, you hope they do. Oh, but you, oh, you didn't tell me how you decided to become a vegan. Like, what exactly oh. happened? What triggered that for you? Oh, you've got a good memory. I'd forgotten that now. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I had a series of experiences. I was a law enforcement officer in Maryland, and I actually f went on a farm where the people had moved away, and the animals had all died of starvation except one little pig mm -hmm. who was still alive. And I carried that little pig out to the water pump and held his head up and gave him water, and he grunted and was, you know, grateful for it. And I, when I went home that night, I sent him to the vet. I was wondering what I had for dinner. And this is before microwave ovens, you mm. know, we, we didn't have any of that stuff. And I thought, oh good, I have defrosted pork chops. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, I thought, you know, I'm going to prosecute these people for abandoning all these animals to die slowly and horribly. But I bet you, I know in my heart, the slaughterhouse is a hideous place. And I thought, and I'm paying somebody to kill another pig so I can eat those chops. I was a bad cook. There were no vegan foods anywhere. Didn't know what I was going to eat. But I stopped eating animals. Mm -hmm. I still ate, unlike you, I still ate shellfish until one day in a restaurant, my birthday, everybody was drinking wine and happy. They brought a plate of live lobsters to the Ooh, table. I can't stand when I see that. When you walk into a restaurant and you can see the lobster, I'm like, oh, man, how could you? I love it. No, you don't. Like you're like, just pretending. Me, no. I know you're yeah, pretending. I feel sad when you see the things all tied up. I think that alone would be enough. If I see that, because I'm a very visual person. Like I stopped eating eggs from first grade until after college because we went to a farm and saw like all the eggs. And I was like, oh, I can't eat eggs anymore. It's like if I have a bad experience or something like that. I think when people see certain things, it might turn them off. You don't eat eggs either, Ingrid? No. I don't really? eat anything that comes from an animal just because I've seen factory farms. Most eggs come from factory farms. Mm -hmm. These chickens, and I used to take chickens from the Humane Society and give them a home. And they all have personalities. People say, how can chickens have... They do. You've got... Chickens who flirt, chickens who are aloof and stay away from the rooster. You've got the, ch the rooster guards his girls so carefully. I mean, they're all wonderful in their own way. And I went to a factory farm for eggs. They're crammed in there. It's filthy. The chickens on the tiers of cages above defecate. They shit and crap onto the ones below. And they're all covered in fecal matter. And then they pull them out by their legs, put them in the truck. They break a wing, they break a leg, they don't care. You know, it's like what, what if fecal you raising, soup. What if you were raising your the, own chicken, treating it nice and loving, and it was laying eggs? I wouldn't have a problem with that. So you would eat the eggs <clears throat> then? I wouldn't because I have to set an example. I have to show that you don't need anything. You don't need to steal from from an animal. You don't need to kill an animal. Okay, so I okay. have to show that so from my you, shoes to what I eat. So what if you had a golden goose, right? And you were treating <laughs> this golden goose so nice and it was laying these gold 24 carat eggs. That's what impossible. would you do with the eggs? <laughs> would you keep those? No, I would sell those and put the money in the pita to help other animals. So can but I, if you know where there is a golden goose, please call me yeah, right away. So can I know. sell? The, I can sell. You can sell the regular eggs. No, the regular eggs. You shouldn't. Egg. An egg is a cholesterol bomb. You know, we we're talking about health. Mm -hmm. An egg is one of the least healthy things. Cheese is worse, but because cheese is just basically like Vaseline that you're I putting in cheese. your arteries. And it always says you. cheese food. It never <clears throat> says, I don't know exactly what cheese is. If you read it, it's like, this is a cheese food or something like that. I don't know. And they have artificial cheeses you can use now. Yeah, they have vegan cheeses yeah, vegan too. Cheese. Used to taste like dog food. Yeah, it's better. Now, now it's great. You've I got camembert eat it and mm -hmm. all sorts of things that are vegan. Mm -hmm. And you've got Miyoko's cheese and Kite Hill cheese and all these cheeses. So if you want cheese, cheese it's still not the healthiest thing because it's so fatty right but it's way less fatty than cow's milk cheese so you've eaten dog food <laughs> you can eat some dog food <laughs> if it's you vegan. Said the vegan like dog food yeah dog food <laughs> when i was like a it. little girl i used to eat dog biscuits that my what? mother would put out my mother would put them out for our dog shawnee and i would she'd always find me eating them so you are really yeah. one with the animals <laughs> why didn't peter they like, can eat it we can eat it <laughs> why didn't they like jlo's halftime costume Oh, the because of the feathers. Um, I wish, I wish. I mean, the one thing is it was wonderful to show the flag of Puerto Rico. The whole act was phenomenal. But then the feathers. And obviously, she just, I mean, she's got minders. Nobody has told her. She 
clearly hasn't seen where feathers come from, from ostrich to chicken. I mean, you don't want these things from dead things. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the animals are raised for feathers, for the feather industry, so they want a certain quality of feathers, and then they're killed. So, you know, give it a break. How do we know that the feathers are real? We always get in touch with the representatives of whoever we're trying to influence to Mm -hmm. make them do something kinder. And I assume, but I don't know for fact, that we would have talk to her rep because we try never to go after anybody unless we've verified you know there is a problem here a real problem because sometimes it is faux faux feathers faux fur whatever it is because I think about that when I see the Peter people throw paint on people and I'm like how do you you have not seen that yes there's been videos of that (laughs) I don't know I mean you said it's not really the Peter people but there are videos so so I always wonder what if that person had on faux fur how do they know the fur is real in the first place (laughs) I don't know because I don't know who they are, but (laughs) but, not me. (laughs) Yeah, and you find nowadays it's so funny Mm -hmm. if you come up. I always say something to anyone who is wearing a faux, a fur, excuse me, and sometimes the faux is so real that you don't exactly know. Mm -hmm. And so I will always ask. I'll say, "Excuse me, is that is that real fur? Is that from a real animal?" And even if it is, and you when you get close, you know it is. People are. They don't want this anymore. They're embarrassed. Right, or they're, and they'll say... Fur shaming. No, yeah, fur shaming. They'll say, no, 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 no. Or they'll say, well, it is, but it was my grandmother's and in her honor. So there's a lot of excuses that are being banded about. Mm-hmm. I love a good faux <laughs> fur. So. And Stella McCartney just put Anna Wintour in one. First mm-hmm. time I've ever seen Anna Wintour in a faux fur. She used to really be a pimp for the fur industry. Right. And now uh, it's faux. What, right. what about taxidermy? What about it? Like, how, how do you feel about that? Like, stuff in your animals after you, you they die? After I think hunting? It's weird. No, not hunting. I don't oh. want to say hunting. After they die. Like, say if your pet dies and you want to stuff it and put it up as a memorial. Um, personally, I think it's a little weird. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wouldn't do it myself because it would always remind me of that animal I loved. Um, but for some people, it's a comfort. So it doesn't hurt an animal because they're dead. They're dead already. Yeah, anything mm-hmm. you do when they're dead is probably okay, unless it's really disrespectful, like you put their head on the wall because you killed them. Mm-hmm. You know, that's really pushing it. So you would be fine if people wore furs as long as they didn't kill the animals to get the fur. The animals just died on their own and they used the fur, and the fur is fine. I wouldn't have a problem with it except to think, why do you want to do that? Because it's just so yesterday mm-hmm. or day before yesterday or a few years ago or a long time ago. Because you mentioned cavemen <laughs> earlier, and I really think about cavemen. I mean, I've, only from pictures I've seen, they would use animal skin to stay warm. But we yeah. have a lot of other options now. Yeah, but back I mean, then, they I didn't would really even have think like exactly. the act of skinning yeah. an animal even if they're dead, still seems pretty nasty to me, but... It is, and you know what's happening out in the West, Colorado and those places. They um, People are getting Creutzfeldt Jakob disease. It's just like mad cow disease, only it's mad elk disease. So hunters are going out and they're shooting elk and moose and so on, and they use, they tan the hide. And when they're skinning them, they're fleshing them, um, they're picking up this virus, this, mm-hmm. and it's, um, it's wiping... Elk is really tasty. That's you stopped that. I had it when I was that. in Wyoming. I'm not going to You stopped that, and that was it's the last time. It's a little gaming, time. but it's really tasty. Last time that you ate that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to ask you about Christian Clark. Christian Clark is a lawyer. Uh, she's the director, executive director of the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law, and she said PETA has a long history of misappropriating images of black suffering and black struggle to promote its brand. How, how do you respond to that? I think it's sad that she would say that. I don't think any... I mean, we've got... Oh, we don't tabulate who who is black and who is white in our membership. I mean, we've had wonderful members, and we still have wonderful members. We were talking about the fur campaign, Taraji G. Henson. I mean, what is appropriation about that? There is appropriation, and I'll grant you. There's also appreciation, and there is also conformity, which shouldn't happen. But no, I mean... There's so many people who happen to be black, who happen to be kind, who happen not to like cruelty, who happen to be PETA members. I don't know what she means, but I wish she'd look deeper. She can call me. I'm happy to talk to her. I wonder if it's because the struggle, because when you, like you said, when I, when I told you earlier, when you were describing Eking. things animals go through, it does sound like the black experience. I wonder if that's the reason. And the fact that we were three-fifths of a human at one point, so they did treat us like oh, animals. Yeah. Oh, no question. No question. I mean, it's what to us... It's one thing, and discrimination is discrimination. You know, just when you understand, like, as a woman, if I understand women's rights, I shouldn't understand 
just because I'm a woman. I should understand that the principle there is you should not discriminate against me because I'm not like you. And it's the same with uh, child labor. It's the same with um, people of other religion. It's the same with immigrants, what's happening now. They're treated as if they're some kind of non living being and so all discrimination is wrong all disrespect all bullying all needless violence all prejudice is wrong and it's hard for some people who are focused in and i understand this who are focused in on women's rights or black rights or whatever it is to broaden their horizon to realize there is a principle at work here it's not who the victim is it's that that there is victimization that there is oppression you can change the victims around endlessly that is not insulting what's wrong is that somebody is victimizing some living being leave mm-hmm. them alone just because if you don't relate then don't relate but don't do these things to others just because you think of them as mm-hmm. others are you passionate like this about all others yeah i mean the aged children I, the whole gamut to me it it really upsets me at a fundamental level i'm ashamed of my species i'm ashamed of my race sometimes i'm ashamed of my own gender mm-hmm. even though i think men often do more bad things than women it's because they have more power mm-hmm. you put a woman in a place of power like men yeah sure yeah. absolutely i mean you just look around mm-hmm. yeah no question all right terrible species <laughs> the Ingrid. species that got to the top through bullying. <laughs> it was good talking to you, Ingrid, Ingrid Newkirk. Uh, Al- Animal Kind is Animal out kind right is out now, now, so make sure yep. you pick that up. She's the CEO of PETA. We appreciate you for coming through. I appreciate you for having me. Thank you very much, and good luck with everything you do. All right, it's the Breakfast Club. Thank you. <laughs>